Hi, welcome to the introduction part of SAP S4 HANA. In today's part, we will be covering overview of S4 HANA, which includes SAP HANA and S4 HANA. Then overview on SAP Simple Finance and migration to S4 HANA. Let's see what SAP HANA is all about. SAP HANA is basically an in-memory data platform that is deployable as an on-premise appliance or in the cloud. It is a common database approach for online transaction processing and online analytical processing using an in-memory column database. So this is a new database introduced by SAP itself to overcome the different database in the market with putting number of different things in it like today's organization has to process a huge amount of data and they want to go for extracting meaningful information from this data and to be able to report on it effectively and SAP HANA is the one which help you with your data storage and analyzes needs of today to the corporates. SAP HANA is the right core to the future proof of the organization in preparation for the information explosion coming with the expansion of Internet of Things. So the huge flood of data which is there in today's time in all the different organization, SAP HANA database helps them to do the analytics, to do the analysis in a much more faster way out and to give the meaningful information to the management. That's why you can see the diagram. It in the previous version used to include three different parts, cubes. One is transaction, then analysis, then acceleration and processing separately. So these three things used to be done separately as of now in different databases used in the market today. So where you store the data in three different copies and then you process those data. Whereas in SAP HANA, all the data is stored in one cube. Whether it is a transaction data or analysis or whatever, every data is stored in one particular place and the processing is done from there itself. So what it does it, it eliminate unnecessary complexity and latency less hardware is required for that as the data has to be stored at one particular place it helps in accelerate through innovation simplification plus in memory so sap hana stores the data in memory within the memory which makes it the processing of the data much more faster as compared to any other database today in the market so that is SAP HANA. SAP HANA is nothing but just a common database platform where the data is stored and processed. Now, SAP S4 HANA. S4 HANA is a new product and it is SAP's biggest innovation since SAP R3, which we are using in the market. SAP S4 HANA is the short form for SAP business suit for SAP HANA. It is a new product fully developed, fully built on the most advanced in memory platform today. That is SAP HANA and modern design principles with SAP Fury user experience that is the UX application. It brings the next big wave of SAP innovations to our customers similar to the transition from SAP R2 to R3 happened. SAP S4 HANA is only built on SAP HANA. It, SAP S4 HANA cannot be built on any other database. SAP S4 HANA can be built only and only on SAP HANA because as of today only SAP HANA platform can deliver such level of massive simplifications and innovations which is needed. 
So what SAP S4 HANA does is it deliver massive simplifications that is customer adoption, data model, user experience or decision making, business processes or models. And if you talk about innovations, innovations means the internet of things, big data, business networks and mobile first. So the huge advantages or sim simplifications is done within S4 HANA. It's the next generation business suit to help lines of businesses and industries run their business simple with all that only HANA can do. It reduces the TCO while produce providing new opportunities to increase business value from existing investments. So SAP S4 HANA is nothing but SAP HANA database has been developed to the next level that is SAP S4 HANA. As you can see in the diagram, SAP S4 HANA provides SAP Fury user experience. That means you can have apps, applications on your cell phone, on your smartphone or your iPhones and you can run SAP through your smartphones. Innovation in memory database. So the database stores the data within the memory which makes it much more faster as compared to any database around today. New architecture and data model, renewed applications, new UI technology. So the new UI technology is to show you the things in a much prettier way out, in much simpler way out, which looks the feel and of that particular data or the things on the screen looks much better. Cloud and on-premise deployment models. So to Go for SAP S4 HANA deployment, you have two way outs. One is a cloud. You can, you can go for cloud S4 HANA or you can go on-premise deployment of S4 HANA. So both the options are there provided by SAP or you can even have a hybrid solution where partially you can go for cloud and partially you can go for on-premise deployment as well. So SAP S4 HANA is a new product line and it is not a legal successor of SAP business suit product. The classical SAP business suit and the SAP ERP is a separate product line and will still be available. So the SAP which we are using as of now that is the R3 has nothing to do with SAP S4 HANA. It's two different product lines and in the next 10 years or so SAP will stop supporting SAP R3 and then SAP S4 HANA will be the road ahead. So the key benefits of technology, real time, data processing, data reconciliation, you don't need to go and have to execute batch processes at the back end, everything can be done at the front end, responsive, improve user satisfaction by reducing wait time, predictions can be done much faster for the future and analysis can be done for the futures very faster and, and, and much more positive results. Drill downs can be done so analyze at any level you want to go for with your data. Simulation, explore the impact of business decisions on outcomes. Recommendations, build in data driven decision support system. So with huge data you can go and have all your analysis, predictions, forecasting, simulations done and so as to take decisions for the business. So this is about S4 HANA. So we discussed about SAP HANA and S4 HANA. Now let's move on to SAP Simple Finance. SAP Simple Finance. SAP Simple Finance solution marked the first step in our SAP S4 HANA roadmap for customers. SAP Simple Finance is an add-on to ERP, which means it is a standard product developed to work on the top of SAP ERP, which we are using today. 
SAP Simple Finance contains the product SAP Accounting powered by SAP HANA. SAP Accounting powered by SAP HANA. Sorry, which contains your general ledger accounting. So SAP Accounting powered by HANA contains your general ledger accounting, your controlling and your asset accounting. It is a system of records based on line items as a single source of truth for operational reporting and planning. So that we will discuss in a while. So SAP Simple Finance solution marked the first step in our SAP HANA roadmap as said. Financial coding was the first part of ERP optimized to run SAP HANA. The solution has demonstrated the value of simplifications, for example, no indexes, no aggregates, no redundancies, and instant insight in finance. So everything is real time. You don't have to wait for reports to be generated in, in overnight or in, in couple of hours. You don't need to go and run batches or background jobs you whatever needs needs can be done instantly on a screen and which gives you the meaningful reports or whatever the data required SAP simple finance is an add-on to ERP which means it is a standard product developed to work over or on the top of SAP ERP that is SAP ECC 6 EHP 7 so you can only go for SAP S4 HANA when your client has got SAP ECC 6 and EHP 7, the upgraded version. So if you have got your SAP upgraded to ECC 6, EHP 7, that is the Enhancement Package 7, then only you can deploy SAP HANA over that in it. The official name used SAP Simple Finance add-on for SAP Business Suite powered by SAP HANA which in, in short form is known as SFIN2 however from October last year SAP speaks of S4 HANA Finance replacing SAP Simple Finance However, both means the same thing, but moving on, you will hear more of S for HANA Finance and not for uh, not the word SAP Simple Finance. And it includes simple coding. SAP Simple Finance on premise edition 1511, the latest edition of SAP S for HANA Finance, is available in the market, and very soon, SAP on premise edition 1603 is is about to be launched so it's it's a big innovation big thing a new technology with a lot of innovations which we would be looking in and FICO part is the first thing which has been taken up as a simple finance in HANA and the other other modules are are still on the pipeline so you can see on the screen now that SAP S4 HANA Finance or Simple Finance in HANA has been divided into three parts. One is SAP Accounting powered by SAP HANA, then SAP Cash Management powered by SAP HANA, and SAP Integrated Business Planning for Finance. SAP Accounting powered by HANA includes your normal FICO part that is the general ledger accounting, controlling and then your asset accounting. Whereas SAP Cash Management includes your FSCM basically which is a new product for group cash management. SAP Integrated Business Planning for Finance is is uh, all related with the planning part so like the cost center planning internal order planning or profit center planning which we used to do in controlling module now will will be taken care by SAP integrated business planning for finance so you you would be doing all those things in this particular part and at the same time there are certain BPC part which has been taken up SAP integrated business planning for finance. So this is a new capabilities and enhanced integration for ERP and BPC. 
this three all together comprises your SAP HANA platform. So this particular part makes your simple finance more aligned, which is a single source of truth. Agile means real time processes and predictive means dynamic planning and analysis. So these are the three most important uh, feature of S4 HANA finance or simple finance that is it is a single source of truth, real time processing, dynamic planning and analysis. So about the single source of truth we'll discuss in, in the next slide. Now if you talk about real time processing, all the processing will take real time whether it is of any module, if it is integrated to finance, it will be real time. It will be done on the front screen without any wait, without any background processing of jobs, nothing. Everything is real time and you will get the reports will be real time. You don't have to wait for long time to fetch the data as in R3 it takes it, it takes long time to generate certain reports even. So those things are not there in it. It's all in real time basis predictive dynamic planning and analysis so that's what the integrated business planning take care of the dynamic planning and analysis so it's just the whole dynamic planning what kind of a different planning you want to do and the different analysis and predictions or uh, things you need for the business to be decided so if you talk about single single source of finance so single source of Truth basically refers to universal journal. In SAP Simple Finance now, many tables have been removed and a single table have been brought in where you will find all the data relates to any of the different modules in FICO or in finance in one particular table that is ACDOCA, that is Universal Journal. So whether it is a general ledger entry, you will find the details within the universal journal table, whether it is a profitability segment or material ledger or asset plan accounting or management accounting. So whether it is a, a FI or a CO or a product costing or COPA, whether it, it is it is material ledger, you will find all those things consolidated in one particular table. That makes it all your data in one table that makes it a single source of truth and it avoids your reconciliations to be done. So you can see those plan architecture or features that one line item table with full detail of all applications for instant insight and extensibility. The secondary cost elements are now a GL account. So now whatever the cost element, whether it is a primary or a secondary cost element now, will be a part of your GL master data. Data storage only once no reconciliation is needed. Redu reduction of memory footprints through elimination of redundancy as the data is stored at one place. So you don't need to go and do a lot of processing. So because of which the memory is saved, the reduction in the memory is there. Fast multi-dimensional reporting can be done without a BW. So this particular part is a very, very significant, significant part in, in the simple finance. <laughs> Let's see in SAP system how we can have a look of this and the other part. So we can see now in SAP system itself that this is the table ACDOCA which you need to run in SC16. SC16 is the transaction where we run the Tables. So here you need to run the table ACDOCA, enter, and here you can put the details. Or suppose I run it for blank. Oh, as of now there is no data, but however, let's show you the sum of the part. So you can see this is the table, and it shows you a lot of details in the below part. And if you go, you will find a lot of things related to your asset accounting, your product costing and other things in it. So it, it comprises all the details within a particular table 
and for one particular document number so you must be aware uh, being an FSU consultant that if when you post one one accounting document it creates a CO document it creates uh, a COPA document at the same time and for all these different documents there are different tables now all those tables have been consolidated into one table that is the universal journal entry line items so here you will find all the details in one table and those tables are scrapped or removed so this is the very important new table in SAP simple finance now moving to the next some of the details the table replaced by SAP HANA views so you can see the total tables have been removed so the total table and application index table of general ledger accounting like the GLTO, BSIS, BSAS, FLEXA tables have been removed now. Similarly, the total table and application tables for AR and AP like KNCA, KNC3, LFC1, LFC3, BSID, BSIK. So these tables again have been removed now and in controlling a part, the total table for controlling that is COSP and COSS have been taken off and in Metro ledger tables MLIT, MLPP these are the different tables which has been removed now from simple finance and in asset accounting table ANE, KANEP, ANEA so some of the tables which contains your line items as the, those have been merged with your ACDOCA that is the universal table so that's why these tables have been removed from SAP simple finance so these re replacing these tables however some of the tables are there still but they cannot be used just their views have been created by SAP to ensure continuation of all red accesses to the tables moving to the next part is deployment scenario for SAP accounting and simple finance so when you want to go for a SAP simple finance in case of migration of S4 HANA, there could be three options. One is upgrade and migrate all instances. So if you are in a classical system or in different R3 system, you need to first move on to SAP ERP6 enhancement package 7. And then only you can have a deployment of SAP simple finance over that. So you need to move or migrate from your classical or R3 system to ERP6.7. ECC 6.7 and then on that SAP simple finance can be implemented option 2 is to upgrade and migrate and consolidate so that will reduce the number of instances so in that case again also the same thing if you want to upgrade yourself migrate then also the same process you need to first upgrade your SAP system from classical or R3 to ECC 6.7 and then only you can go for a migration with reduced number of instances and third is replicate into a central finance so central finance is again a, a new feature in SAP simple finance where you don't need to go for a migration of your classical or R3 system but what you can do is you can map or replicate the data on a day-to-day -day basis or real-time basis in simple finance in a separate system which is known as central finance instance and have your reporting or different analytics or or data processing can be done on the simple finance part so this is an optional which reduces the number of instances over the time so you don't have to bear a huge cost of implementing or migrating for all of your businesses around the globe to SAP simple finance but just you can keep on executing all your classical system and just push your real-time data from classical to one particular system of simple finance for data processing or for consolidated analysis or processing or financials part so moving on to the migration now migration for migration things are not so simple the migration of existing system configurations, master data and application data is closely connected to the process for installing the SAP Simple Finance. So if you want to migrate, there are 
a lot of different preparation needs to do to be done for the migration part and you need to go for customizing the things in the system for migrating so let's see how those things can be done so before moving on to that let's see whether th this is just looks like the same r3 system to you, to you or to me even but how we can identify whether this is a sap s4 hana simple finance system so for that the first part is you can go to system and then the status and here you can check the version of the software so you can see the product version you can go and you can expand the component and you can have a look of what this particular so here we can we can have a look so you need to go to instant installed product version so here you can find that this is sap s4 hana on premise this is 1511 is the release the latest release and you can see over here the short description sap s4 hana on premise 1511 so from this product version you can check whether you are working on sap hana product or not even the server name is also there s4 hana s4h underscore zero zero so these are the different things details can be looked into but what is more important is this part now this is just to check the which product and what is the version we are working on s4 hana now moving on to the migration part so before that you need to go to spro the same process scp reference img so in this particular img screen you will find one add on that is migration from scp erp to scp accounting powered by scp hana this is one feature if you find that means you have, you have got your uh, your particular system has got sap hana in it and in this you will find number of steps because migrating from sap classical system to sap hana is uh, more difficult or more typical as compared to simply implementing an sap s4 hana project now moving on to this if you go and expand on the migration side you will find number of details so first is the information migration from sap erp to sap accounting powered by hana next is the preparation and migration so you cannot migrate it migration is not so simple you are migrating from one system to now hana so you need to go for a lot of preparations of transactions master data your abap objects riceps and all so you need to prepare do some preparations and then some customization has also to be done because few things will change from the classical to the to the new system the hana system so the the customizing has to be taken care of so that we migrate the data the transaction data accordingly so within the preparation we'll go back just in a while then there is a migration and then activities after migration so the migration is divided into two part one is a pre migration and then is a post migration so what pre migration preparation and customizations you need to do and then when you are ready you check all the customization are okay or not and once the migration is done then you need to do certain activities after migration so these are the various steps in that now let's just have a look of the preparations and migrations of customizing so if you move on to this you will find check customizing settings prior to migration so you need to check your customizing settings prior to migration this is the first step so do take care one thing that whatever the different steps coming up in the order you must go one by one to them you should not go first and then the eighth one and then again the second one or the third one no it should be in the sequence otherwise things will go wrong and you could jeopardize your migration part so for migration you you have different things now here so these are called the before posting before and dunning migration and then you need to do the preparation and customizing settings for general ledger accounting for asset accounting for controlling then the material ledger house banks and all so these are the different 
migration, customizing and preparations needs to be done. So this is the first step that is check customizing settings prior to migration. So in preparation and migration of customizing for general ledger, we need to do the configuration settings for updating the ledger configuration, then verifying the accounting principles, check valuation areas needs to be done under the general ledger. So if you go and check this particular step, so you can see there are number of steps which steps needs to be done under the general ledger for as a part of the preparation. So the first is you need to check and adapt fiscal year variant. That is the first step and you need to go and execute this step. Then it says controlling area. So you need to assign your controlling area to it. So as I assign a controlling area, you need to go and need to execute this step so as to have a look whether your company code fiscal year variant and your controlling area fiscal year variant is same or not. So that is what it compares the fiscal year variant of your between your CO and the FI module. So execute and you can see now the message no changes required for fiscal year. That means I don't need to do anything. It's working perfect fine. So if there would happen any differences in fiscal year variant of FI and CO module, then probably you have to assign a new fiscal year variant so as to align both together to each other. So that is the, the first step within the migration part under the general ledger. Moving to the next back. So similarly you will find the next step that is migrate general ledger customizing. So you need to execute this step to migrate and okay. So I created a transport and it what it does it it checks the migration part. It check whether the migration uh, steps and settings in between at the back end and you can see now the check has been passed then the ledger 0L successfully migrated Je ledger configuration copied to the new general ledger entry ledger configuration in this client so everything is okay so similarly if everything is green means you are work you are you can go ahead until you get an error in it Similarly, we need to go to the third step to define the settings for ledgers and currency type. So you need to have a check on the currency or the ledger. So here the leading ledger is there and then the M1 and M2 are the non-leading ledger or you can say the extension of ledger. So there is no, no term of non-leading ledger you will find in S4 HANA simple finance. You will basically find a leading ledger or an extension ledger. So leading ledger is there and to the leading ledger you need to double click on to the company code setting. You can check whether what are the different company codes assigned to this particular leading ledger. So these are the different company codes assigned to it and within that you can see the currencies assigned. So what is the local currency, what will be the global currency, then what are the fiscal years assigned to these ledgers, the posting period variance assigned to these ledgers. So these are the different settings needs to be done as per the requirement. And then you can select any of the company code and you can check what are the different accounting principles assigned to them. So you can see now the company code 1000 accounting principle GAP gap is assigned. So these, these are something which has already been assigned but when you will work on a migration project you will not find these things assigned. You need to assign the company code to the ledger then you need to assign the ledger to the accounting principle. So these things and if you know the the new GL accounting so it, it's it, it would be much more easy to understand this part. Then the next part is define ledger for CO version. So you need to define the ledger for the CO part as well. So here you need to go and you need to define that this is the company code. This is the ledger you would be using and the version will be zero always so as to have the plan and the actual version. So that is why we recommend zero to be taken. Now the moving next is define document type for postings in controlling area. So for controlling module again you can have your different document type assigned. So the controlling document will be through the document type SA. 
so as a sign and if you want you can you can delete this you can create your own entry you can have your own document type as well so you can delete this part from over here and you can assign your new new entry over here as well so that's all up to you how uh, which one you want to assign and take up with so that is what needs to be worked over here so okay no so this is what then the next is defining the document type for mapping variant for co business object transactions so again these are for the business transactions within the co so you can find the document type mapping variant is created and then these variant are assigned to the mapping co business transactions to document type so that needs to be assigned so these are the steps within the general ledger accounting which needs to be done so basically in the general ledger migration part we the follow we what we do is we do the company code assignment the currency settings fiscal year variant open item uh, open period variants then we need to do the real time integration of fi and co module within that you will need to assign the ledgers to the accounting principles or you can assign multiple accounting principles to the ledger as well like ifrs or cap uh, to the leading ledger and then uh, the extension ledger as well so that is needs to be done now moving on we as we see the document type mapping for co business transaction need to be assigned similarly if you move down you need to check and define default values for postings in controlling so if you do not enter a default ledger group over here in this all the co postings will go to all the general ledgers so that is why you can see over here the company code has been assigned with the leading ledger group and then the document type which we just defined in the earlier step so the these are the steps needs to be taken within the customizing for general ledger similarly moving down to the next step the first part is general ledger so first you need to do the preparation and customizing for general ledger then only you should move to the next part so the next is your your preparation and migration of customizing for asset accounting so within asset accounting you need to follow the steps so there are two way outs one is migration from classical to new asset accounting and the another is adjustment in new asset accounting so if anybody is already in ECC 6.6 .6 or 6.7 and they are already using a new asset accounting they just need to do the adjustments in the new asset accounting whereas if somebody is migrating from a classical SAP system to a new S new one to to simple finance or HANA then they need to migrate from classic to new asset accounting so they are their own steps within that so you can see over here there are different steps within that first is from classical to new asset accounting first you need to prepare new asset accounting for that the steps are there the steps are one is to migrate your chart of depreciation and then you need to display the migration log perform additional manual activities then you need to check the prerequisite for activating the asset accounting so what are the different prerequisites needed for activating new asset accounting needs to be checked over here so that needs to be compiled so you can see over here check before import so you need to select this checkbox and you need to execute this so as to have a look of what are the different checks needs to be done so as executed it will do all its activities and you can see you will find the errors so you need to go and have to work on that what are the error what needs to be done to fix that because until this is done you cannot move on to the next step so these are the steps for classical to new asset accounting and once you have done all the prerequisite for new asset accounting then only you can go and activate asset accounting without that you cannot activate asset accounting similarly for adjustments in new asset accounting so there are steps for that you need to do the adjustment 
So you need to go for adjust parameters in chart of account and then to display the migration log. So that will display you the, the adjustment logs and there are no error in it. So this is for asset accounting preparation and customizing steps which needs to be done. And these are very much compulsory and mandatory to be done if there is a migration project. Do not miss any of these steps within it. Otherwise, this could lead to uh, different errors or problems or later on. Uh, so it's better to sort it out. Moving on similarly now is the preparation and migration of customizing for controlling. So in controlling again, you have steps and within controlling them, this is all related to your profitability analysis or COPA. So in COPA, the basic difference in this is now earlier in COPA, we used to uh, mostly used to see that uh, cost based accounting COPA is used. But in this, you can see over here in the first line itself that the account based COPA is there. So in SAPS for HANA or simple finance, you must know that account based COPA activation is a mandatory part for it. It could be that in the classical system or in the previous system, you would have been using cost based COPA. But in SAP simple finance, you must have to activate account based COPA. And that is what the steps are there for it. Adapt setting for controlling segment characteristics, maintain operating concern, maintain operating concern for banking add ons, and then finally activate account based profitability analysis. So you can see you will not find anywhere the cost based profitability analysis. No, because account based profitability analysis is made mandatory. However, on the parallel side, you can use your cost based account COPA too. But while moving on to HANA, you need to activate your account based profitability. Otherwise, you cannot use your cost based profitability analysis even. So this all steps are just for activating your account based profitability analysis and nothing else in the controlling part. Rest of the other sub modules of controlling are, is not a concern and has been taken is been taken care of simply. Moving to the next is now the material ledger. So material ledger will have its own steps in it. So there is a single step that is to migrate material ledger customizing and then in a house bank there are its own steps. So these are the different preparation and migration of customizing. So once you complete these steps, then only you can move to the next that is migration. And within migration now you will. So regenerate CDS view and field mapping is the one step which generates new tables and fields in SAP Simple Finance. So when you are moving from a classical or the previous system to HANA, when you execute this step, then only the new table that is the universal line item table ACDOCA is generated. And all the different fields apart from that in the other tables are also generated. So this is a step, but you cannot move and you cannot do this step earlier than the previous steps. Do take care of that. Move in line with these steps as, as prescribed. So as to have a successful migration. So as said, the second part is migration of cost element. So as said in the previous slides that the cost elements now has been removed from the controlling part and it has been added to your GL master data FS00. So now whether it is a secondary cost element or a primary cost element, both will be taken care in the general ledger master data. So the transaction data or the transactions for cost element increase in display or change has now been removed because it has been merged with the GL master. So that is why the migration of cost element needs to be taken care. So you need to decide what are the secondary cost element, what are the primary cost element and it need to be created with which GL account and all. So you need to check the consistency of GL accounts and cost elements 
so how you can you have to take care of that second is migrating the secondary cost element to chart of accounts that has to be taken care similarly we need to display the migration of cost elements then migrate default account assignments and then the authorizations and all so these are the different steps for migrating cost elements then the technical check for transaction data so as we know the basic steps for migration in this particular part is first is migration of cost element second is is to check the transaction data that what are the technical checks needs to be taken care for the transaction data so that is the steps within it which needs to be taken care over here so you need to analyze the, your transaction data which you would be migrating to the to the hana system and are all those transaction data okay or not display the status of analysis of transaction data then you need to do the reconciliation of your transactional data that whatever the data migrated are okay or not are they reconciled or not and all those steps similarly moving on material ledger migration needs to be taken care then enrichment of data migration enrichment of data needs to be taken care so once you have migrated maybe you need to enrich some of the transaction data so which you do it over here then display the status of enrichment of transactional data check for migrated documents what are the documents migrated are everything okay in that or not and all those stuffs so those are the analysis which needs to be taken care and then moving on migration calculation of depreciation and total values so these are the various steps which which are taken care after the preparation is done and that is what you do in in the second step after that is this and once you are done with all these steps within it then you go and you you, you go to complete migration and then you you set the migration to complete with executing this step so once you, all the above steps are taken care you can set this stating that the migration steps are completed and once that is done that means your migration is done so once your migration is done then we move on to the after migration activities so within migration you have got migration of cost elements enrichment of data you need to do the migration of line items migration of balances then you need to reconcile and compare your migrated data then finish migration or complete migration is a step which needs to be taken care at the end so for each step there are technical checks and logs you need to verify the status of them that everything is okay there are no error there are no warning within them and everything is processed correctly so you must process all of them in the test process first of all or in the test environment before releasing it to the production system post migration activities is the second part in it which we'll look into so you can see over here post migration activities are there within it which includes the number of different steps within it transfer of application indexes then display status of transfer application indexes so these are certain parts of post migration part which we will be discussing in detail when we will be covering each of these different steps one by one in detail with execution within the sap system so as to give you a better understanding of each and every step and how that has to be done what are the logs needs to be checked and how those error if there are any to be fixed can be taken care of so this is about the migration part so even even there are certain other things which can be looked into like uh, uh, apart from the migration which we did now there are some changes in the hana as compared to the to the r3 if anybody have worked on ecc 6.5 or ecc 6 so there are new gl concept uh, in that and there are some changes to to the new gl concept from that to this sap simple finance so the, the some of the things which does not support are like implementation of document splitting does not support now in SAP simple finance then the balance sheet at profit center level is not supported anymore 
uh, new implementation in, in any any HANA new implementation you will not find document splitting you will not find parallel accounting or segment reporting they are no more uh, needed that's why they have been they have been removed from there then you will not find special purpose ledger to to new jewel accounting as they are not needed anymore in the in in, in the simple finance part so these are some of the things which have been which have been taken off from the simple from the simple finance or you can say s for hana part so that is what you can see over here if we go to the see the new gl steps so if you move over here to the new gl steps within the document splitting you will find a lot of steps have been taken off okay it uh, so you can see the cost of goods sold is no more there so the document is splitting if you look after you will not find that even the document is splitting so the wizard is there okay this has been added up so there there are differences in the new jewel accounting which was earlier and now and if you move on to the to the ledgers as well uh, to the ledger setting now so you will you will not find the non-leading ledger over here anymore so there is only leading ledger or or you can see a ledger and an extension ledger there cannot be a lead non-leading ledger anymore now so that is not there that that needs to be taken care uh, that's the difference between your your simple finance and your your sap r3 part moving so you can see now just to have a comparison that in ECC 6 you would be finding number of different ledger steps and the ledger steps have been reduced in SAP Simple Finance. So in, in the previous version in ECC 6 we used to find defined ledger for general ledger accounting, currencies for leading ledger, activation for non-leading ledger, assigned scenarios in customer fields, activate cost of goods sold in the ledger group so these all steps have been uh, have been sorted now and now you only have these four steps that is defined settings for general ledger journal entry ledger then deactivate a ledger for a company code activate cost of sales accounting and define ledger group so the the new GL scenarios which we used to add on that is the assigned scenarios are now has been obsolete Similarly, we used to have the above steps in ECC 6 like in within the document uh, We used to define the document types that is the entry view and the general ledger view steps uh, They are no more in the in the SAP simple finance So in SAP simple finance you will only find the entry view no general ledger views there in it Then the steps have been reduced now you can see the number ranges document number ranges now you will find only documents in entry view now there is no settings for document in general ledger view so whatever the document number created will be created one document for entry level and that the same will be fulfilling the purpose of your general ledger view as well that's why the general ledger view steps have been taken off so the document type number in general ledger view per ledger is obsolete the document type and number of entry view is used for all ledgers so the the ledger steps on the uh, on the right hand side we would be maintaining will be taken care for both the entry view and for the general ledger view similarly the steps in in the controlling module so you can see now the real time integration of controlling steps in ECC 6 used to have have number of steps which has been now reduced in the simple finance part to just uh, four or five of them so the steps have been reduced further in this part as well so SAP tried to come up with lesser uh, of the steps and more of the convenient configuration steps which could have uh, have have more more helpful to the to the business and it's no longer mapping of cost element as we discussed now the uh, cost elements have been merged with your general accounts already so these are some of the changes from the SPRO part from the customizing or the configuration steps part which has been changed from ECC 6. So this is all about 
the demo part of SAP S4 HANA where I just wanted to take you through the simple finance some of the steps uh, how that can be done in the SAP system to give you a, a glance of the steps needed to be taken care of so this is just an overview once the whole training will will be in place each and every step of these will be will be elaborated will be discussed in detail with execution of steps on the screen practically with the SAP logs and errors how need to be resolved the tips would be given on that how you can go and search to to resolve those different errors how you can find a solution to those errors through the SAP service marketplace uh, which introduces a lot of different bugs which are there in the in the in the software and that can be removed so each of these will be discussed with each step by step in the later parts so this is all about the overview on the SAP S4HANA that is it thank you have a nice day take care